Welcome back. Head women's basketball coach Gary Blair joins us now. Texas A&M taking over the SEC network on this day. And Coach, we appreciate your time. And like we were telling Coach Kennedy, there's just no off seasons anymore. There's really no time to hone the golf game, is there? The golf game, uh, my handicap has gone from a 9 to a 12. I'm uh, losing suffering. a little cabbage out there every now and then. I could be because I'm a year older and I do not have as much talent. But it's basketball year-round for us, uh, recruiting camps, speaking engagements. It's just keeping your sport relevant during the off-season as well. Mm -hmm. Thinking about your time at Texas A&M, the success is incredible. You've got the national championship. You've made deep runs in the NCAA tournament. But I want to go back to the beginning. You arrived at Texas A&M never having a losing season in your career. That first year in Aggieland, you went 9-19. and 19. Are you still envisioning this type of success at that time, knowing that after year one, there was a long way to go, wasn't there? A long way to go, but the blueprint had worked at Stephen F., and at Arkansas. We knew how to build programs and, and let's get that word I out of there. We have a national championships. Mm -hmm. That's you, that's all of us Aggies that are out there. We have a national championship and we've worked hard for it. Putting butts in seats, uh, getting the facility updated and getting the right recruits in here. So, but we envision this mm -hmm. and now the thing, can you sustain it? Yeah. And we're still doing it on record by putting people in the stands, but we want that elite level. We want the elite eights, the sweet 16s, and the final fours. Mm -hmm. That's what we're shooting for this year. And we've got a lot of work ahead of us because there's a lot of very good teams in the SEC that are going to try to make sure that we don't get there. <laughs> and that's one of the big topics. When the Aggies joined this conference, it was hard to figure out which sport it might be hardest on. They play great football in the SEC, baseball, and you can go on and down the list. But perhaps women's basketball is right at right there at the top as the toughest when it comes to what the SEC does best. Well, it's gone on for a period of 25 to 30 years, and that was back when Tennessee is winning eight national championships, and Georgia and LSU were always playing at the top, and Arkansas had their run in 98 to the Final Four, but you've had Auburn and Alabama and Vanderbilt also go to the Final Four. So across the nation, the SEC has put it up statistically, we've been the best. The continued success of your program, it goes into 15 and 16, what you'll have back. I know there's the two Courtney's always being something to you. I'll get to them in a moment, but Jordan Jones, uh, that was somebody who meant so much to you last year. And late, just before you went to the NCAA tournament, she went down with that knee injury can you speak to her progress in rehabbing and getting back to your team and helping you in November when it rolls around? Well, that's the first thing I check on every morning is Jordan Jones. Uh, I've made the adage in coaching, you've got to have two things. You've got to have a good marriage and you've got to have a good point guard. And that's very, <laughs> that has carried me my whole career. <laughs> I've got a lovely wife of 35 years, Nan. We'll have celebrated our 36th this July 21st. And uh, my point guards have all been good. Uh, and I think Jordan will get herself back. She's been uh, player of the year and defensive player of the year the last two years in the league. I think she's on her way to uh, leading us back to the tournament again and hopefully up that ladder where we belong, the Elite Eights, the Final Fours. And, uh, but having a point guard, I build my teams around point guard play. All the way when I first got here in 2003, I inherited uh, Carl Williams from uh, Hollywood, Florida, who was one of the best players in the league. And then you go to Aquanisha Franklin, you go to Sidney Coson had a year of Adrian Pratcher, and now you've had uh, four years of Jordan Jones. It's been pretty good, but I'm looking for that next one that's <laughs> out there. So if you're listening, I'm looking for you. <laughs> and then that, that Courtney duo that means so much to you, Williams and Walker. Oh, the two CWs, and that doesn't stand for Country Western. I'm, I'm sorry. It stands for basketball players. Uh, they came in together. They're two different kids. Uh, uh, 
Courtney Williams has got selected to uh, go to the USA team this summer, represent our country in the World University Games. That'll be up in uh, Toronto, and she's on a dynamite team up there. Courtney Walker has just gotten just about every SEC award and Big 12 award from freshman of the year to first team the last two years, and Williams is right beside her. Williams can play one through four, and uh, we're going to move Walker and play her a lot at the point guard position this year, particularly while we're getting Jordan back rehabbed 100%. But we're going to give her a lot of minutes there because we think that'll help her at that next level in the WNBA. And think about your team going into preseason camp as you get closer to November. Is there somebody you almost put, or a group of two or three maybe that you put the onus on, like you're going to help us this year? and we really need it from you during this work we get in before the season. The most important recruits are the ones that are always here on campus. Sometimes we're always looking at the incoming freshmen or junior college. We can't wait to get our hands. Our job is to develop the kids that we presently have here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we've got so many kids playing overseas now and so many kids playing in the league. Uh, there's four right now that are playing. Mm -hmm. We develop young people. We've got some kids that have waited their turn, and now it's their turn to step up. Uh, we've got Jazz Lumpkin, a young lady transferred from Michigan State to be down here closer to her parents who moved to Houston. Uh, she's gonna be playing the four position for us, and this was a kid that started 14 out of 15 games at Michigan State as a freshman. Mm -hmm. And she's lightning quick, can jump out of the gym, and. Uh, I think she's really going to help us. Our two incoming freshmen, Andrea Howard out of uh, Atlanta, she long jumps 41-2. You're not going to get her, Pat Henry, until outdoor <laughs> track. Then we're going to let you bar. But until then, <laughs> mine. Yeah, she'll be in the gym. <laughs> but 41-2, three-time state champion in the triple jump, and she's just uh, a kid that's all over the map. She's only 5'11" but she's going to play the game with so much energy and might be the best athlete we've had at that position ever. And then we've got Danny Williams, a sharpshooter from uh, Clovis, New Mexico, coming in. Remember, we didn't shoot too many threes last year. Danny's already made more threes during the summer than we probably made all of last year. So she's coming in with a great attitude. But look at Chelsea Jennings, how she developed at the end of the year. She's going to go right into instant playing time. And then Kyla Hillsman, our post player, 6'5 kid, along with Rachel Mitchell, the 6'7 kid. That's a good nucleus at the five position. Mm -hmm. So we love our talent. Now we've got to get the execution down to go along with the talent. All right, sir. Hopefully you get to a golf course at some point in time. But thank you for your time today. Hey, it's been good. The SEC has been very good to us, remember a good marriage and a good point guard. <laughs>